Long takes, or uninterrupted shots that capture minutes-long scenes without a single edit, are an opportunity for filmmakers to tell their story in a much more dynamic and intriguing way than usual. They take a tremendous amount of hard work to pull off, but when you do it right, high praise awaits. Creating a successful long take is as thrilling to perform as it is for audiences to watch. But before we jump into how and why filmmakers use long takes in their films, let's take a look at the history of long takes to find out why they fascinate us so much today. There was once a time where long shot lengths were typical in Hollywood. Quick cuts and rapid montages were few and far between. But the theatrical shot lengths of old Hollywood that once felt grand and cinematic became almost redundant thanks to one cultural revolution that drastically altered the entire media industry. In the documentary, The Cutting Edge, screenwriter Lawrence Kasdan discusses how people who grew up surrounded by MTV and 30-second commercials are capable of processing information a lot quicker than older generations. That ability led to people becoming more and more impatient with the media they were consuming in a similar way that listening to your parents' music was uncool. The younger film-going audience desired something faster, edgier, and more energetic compared to what came before. You forgot your boarding pass. Sometimes a cutting style is effective inside of a movie to shake you up and rattle your soul, but consistently uh, to have that style pounding away at you like a metronome on high speed for two and a half hours is, 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 a, is a little bit, at least for me, maybe I'm just getting old, but, but it's a little bit debilitating. Now, it doesn't bother my kids, because my kids were raised on 30-second commercials and on MTV and VH1, and they were raised on video games. If you look at the shot lengths from films throughout history, you'll notice a rapid decrease in the average shot duration coinciding with MTV's peak of popularity in the early 1990s. In this post-MTV world, Filmmakers and editors were forced to shorten shot lengths and make faster paced montages to cater to this intense and energetic cultural revolution. This style of editing a film has been defined since as post-classical editing. The definition of post-classical editing is a style of film editing typified by fast non-linear cuts which emphasize location, mood, and feeling over character and plot development. This style of editing has become a language in American culture and a staple of Hollywood blockbusters. Prime examples of post-classical editing are found in films such as Top Gun, The Bourne Identity, Hunger Games, and most other modern tentpole blockbusters. But if industry professionals are so certain that this generation of filmgoers wants shorter shot lengths, then why are filmmakers still attracted to shooting their long takes? Of course, long takes have a tendency to be praised purely for being a technical gimmick, with people always focusing on the how did they pull that off, but it's good for those aspiring to be the next Emmanuel Lebetsky to learn how unbroken shots can actually help your work achieve something higher than gimmicks. Throughout the history of cinema, many filmmakers, including Alfred Hitchcock, Andre Tarkovsky, Stanley Kubrick, and Steven Spielberg have harnessed the narrative power of long takes to further enhance the way they tell their stories. For those of you looking to achieve successful long takes in your own work, here are four famous cinematic continuous shots to help demonstrate the many ways in which this visual storytelling technique can help you tell your story. Number one, establishing a theme. A great example of this is the now iconic Copacabana shot in Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas. In this scene, gangster Henry Hill escorts his date through the back door of a busy club. While a long take is sometimes seen as little more than directors showing off with, hey, check out what I can do. Scorsese uses that precise quality to make a look what I can do shot to parallel the showing off Henry does for his date, demonstrating the social influence Henry has over his community. It's not easy to do, but leave it someone like Scorsese to show how cleverly a long take can be used to not just make something look cool, but also to accentuate the theme of his movie. Another great example of this type of long take is in Park Chan-wook's Old Boy. The meticulously orchestrated hallway fight is shot entirely in one take. The use of the long take in this scene allows us as an audience to experience Daisu's fatigue as the fight goes on and on with seemingly no end in sight. We see him get punched, kicked, beaten, and stabbed, but time after time, Daisu gets back up and doesn't stop until he's the last one standing. This ongoing shot emphasizes Daisu's unwillingness to stop. By shooting the scene in this manner, director Park Chan-wook is able to establish who Daisu is without needing to say a single word. Number 2. Technical Innovation Long takes don't have to be about gathering response from an audience. They can also be about accomplishing something for those behind the camera. For those who get a kick out of overcoming technical obstacles, the long take can be an exciting opportunity, since they are often extremely difficult to pull off. 
Take the four-minute car scene in Alfonso Cuaron's dystopian masterpiece, Children of Men. The director wanted to shoot the scene from inside a moving vehicle, but there was an obvious problem. You can't fit a camera and a crew inside of a car that's already filled with five actors. To realize this ambition, director Alfonso Cuaron and his team had to create a special two-axis dolly rig that was then lowered into the opened roof of the car so the camera was able to move around freely inside of the car without obstructing the actors. So Alfonso and Chivo, Emmanuel Lebesgue, the cinematographer, came up with this unbelievable piece of machinery that allowed them to cover this 12 minutes of film basically without a cut. I just knew that I wanted the shot to be like that, and I was willing to compromise and says, well, you know, if we have to go green screen, maybe it's the only way. And he was saying, this is not a green screen movie. Are you crazy? This movie has to look raw. It has to look real. You know? The resulting scene is a marvel to behold, technically and artistically, and Quran is not shot away from these dreamlike long takes, shooting Roma and gravity almost entirely with them. Number three, creating tension. There are a few film lovers who don't get giddy over the legendary three minute opening crane shot of Orson Welles' masterpiece, Touch of Evil. The scene follows the journey of a car with a literal ticking time bomb in the trunk. Among many other things, this scene highlights how the long take is a powerful technique for creating tension. Unlike editing, which obscures an audience's perception of time and manipulates it, here the shot plays out in real time and the long take makes us painfully aware of every second ticking by. It's a tremendous example of how you can effectively use a long take to inch viewers closer and closer to the edges of their seats. Number four, capturing realism. As a filmmaker, realism isn't something you might immediately associate with the long take. But just because the intricate choreography and coordination behind the scenes is artificial, it doesn't mean that what appears on the screen is too. The long take enhances that with wonderfully believable touches of realism. While cuts continually change perspective, angle, and shot type, long takes are continuous. They flow and immerse the viewers into the story. This makes the scene much more powerful in certain instances. We are experiencing the entire story, the entire event, the entire experience, moment to moment. One of the best examples of this is another Alfonso Cuaron film, Gravity. Gravity is a survival film which lives and dies by its long takes putting us straight into the perspective of Dr. Stone as she careens through space and navigates the dangers she finds along the way. It also allows us to access her emotions in real time, such as her breakdown near the end of the film in the Chinese satellite. With quick cuts, this would likely lose the tension it has and turn into a rather unconvincing movie. But because we get to see it in real time, her human emotions come across as just that, human. I mean, I'd say one for myself, but I've never prayed in my life, so. Nobody ever taught me how. <laughs> Ultimately, long takes are poetic. They create a strangely profound experience for us as an audience, regardless of the context. As American film critic Roger Ebert once said, if cinema is sometimes dreamlike, then every edit is an awakening. Thanks for watching the video and be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, consider supporting us over on Patreon. It really helps support and grow this channel, and you can get exclusive access to behind-the-scenes content, early access to videos, and you'll be able to vote on what video we release next.